guys what is up welcome to my channel I just wanted to pop in really quickly before we get into the juicy stuff for today's video I am going to be giving you a little tour of what's in my luxury eyeshadow palette drawer I've talked about this many a times on my channel and I've been thinking a lot about redoing some of the organization for my makeup I don't know if this is gonna stay my luxury eyeshadow palette drawer or not so I figured I'd film it just in case I've had a lot of you ask me to do a little bit of a tour of it because there's some good stuff in it so yeah I mean <laughs> It's basically the drawer in this desk. It's a cheap desk from Ikea. Uh, sometimes I use this as my filming background. So it's really great. It has a piece of glass over it and then I just have it decorated as my filming setup. And then you guys are about to see a mess. Just, just ignore that. Hold on, let me show you. So then obviously there's a drawer that pulls out and we have all of the goods in here. Now, like I said, not all of my luxury eyeshadow palettes specifically are in this drawer. This is just how I have this drawer organized with three specific luxury eyeshadow brands, my favorite. And if you see a palette missing or something, I mean, I have all of this as like video idea stuff, <laughs> unorganized, but it's organized in my head. Or I just have them put in a different area. Don't look too deep into it, but I'm just gonna give you a tour of what is in in here. Are you guys ready? Ooh. This is my luxury palette drawer. Let me get a little bit closer for you guys. So I have three brands in this drawer here. Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, we have Vizzy Art, and then I did sneak a few Charlotte Tilbury palettes in here, but this is all the goods that I keep, all the palettes that I want close by. I'm gonna show you the palettes. Probably have a video on most of these palettes if you're curious. We're gonna start off right here. Let's do that. Okay, so we are gonna start off on my Pat McGrath side of the drawer, and it's all organized. I hope I can remember where I put everything, but first things first, we have the Pat McGrath Venus in Fleurs palette. This is one of the semi-newish ones that came out with the blushes. Absolutely beautiful. Up top here, we have an older guy. This is the Mothership Subversive Metal Morphosis palette. This was one of the very first six pans, I believe, to launch. This one was not my favorite, but it's Really, really pretty. Here's another one. We have the Subliminal Mothership Dark Star. I really love this one. It looks so pretty. This I really loved and I didn't realize it was because I loved cool tones so much. But yes, I love this because I love cool tones. These are some throwback palettes. And then we have La Vie en Rose. This is a Baby Mothership Subversive. <gasps> yup. Oh my gosh, I need to play with these. These are so beautiful. It's been so long since I've opened these up. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so we have those. And then in this side right here, I have my Blitz Astral Ritualistic Rose. This is when she dove into the quads. By the way, this isn't really organized into a specific order. It's just by size and then of course by brand, but the palettes themselves from the brands are random. So this this is the Fleur Fantasia that came out. I believe it was over the holidays. This one is a little bit softer. This one wasn't my favorite. And then we have Interstellar Icon. This one is so pretty as well. Oh my gosh, this is motivating me to just do a whole a week of wearing Pat McGrath palettes. I'm feeling re-inspired just by opening these. I don't know if I should put these back or not. Hiding right here in this corner, we have the Divine Rose Eternal Eden palette. Very pretty pinky toned palette if you like the rose. And then hiding down here, we have this mothership palette. What one was this called? Rose Decadence, that's right. And look how pretty that is. Again, another rose palette, but it is beautiful to say the least. Right here in this corner, we have one of the original quads, I believe. Am I, am I remembering that correctly? This is a nocturnal 
Nirvana. I love this one. Isn't it so pretty? And you can actually use this without other palettes. And then I have this guy hiding back here. The one thing I don't like about this drawer is you can't pull it all the way out. It stops right here. So you kind of have to dig back here to get what you need. This is Risqué Rose. Oh my gosh, I forgot she had so many quads. This one is really pretty as well. And this one you can create a full look with because it has a lot of different textures. Then at the base down here, I have one of my favorite palettes that I really do hope she comes out with more in this format. This was a holiday palette and she never came out with another style like this again, but I really, really love it. This is the Mothership Mega Celestial Divinity. Absolutely gorgeous. I love this. This is a combination of her Star Wars palettes and then an extra one. My mom has a Star Wars palettes now in her collection since I have this. Absolutely beautiful. And then here are all eight of my Mothership palettes. The missing one is Decadence. That one is in my mom's collection. I kind of want it in my collection, but it's not right now. But let's take a quick gander at these beauties right here. This is one of the OG3 to have come out. It's extremely wearable, great for the office. I believe it's the Sublime, right? Yes. I will say, for as much as the Pat McGrath stan that I am, I cannot remember the names of her palettes for the life of me. <laughs> okay, right here we have Midnight Sun. This one, you know what, it has grown over time to be a favorite of mine. I wasn't too in love with it when it came out, but it really has such pretty wearable tones. The Pat McGraw section is definitely gonna take the longest because I have to open them. Okay, we have the newest addition to my Pat McGrath drawer over here, which of course is the Hutopian Dream sitting right on top. Love it. We have sitting underneath Divine Rose 2 which is probably my most used Pat McGrath palette, believe it or not. I just love the colors in here and they're just my kind of color story, I don't know. Oh my gosh, look at this shifty shade. Ron's Seduction is next. This one was my all-time favorite for the longest. I'm gonna do an updated Pat McGrath video towards the end of the year. So I need to start digging into these again so that I can re-rank them to an updated 2021 version. But my very first rankings I did, I think this one was my number one favorite. And then we have the OG Divine Rose. My box is falling apart. This one, I need to tape it. And the pink packaging, I love it. This one is so subtle, really pretty. All of them are pretty though, so. <laughs> Ooh, this one I went through a phase with where it was my favorite. This is the subliminal, again, one of the OG3. Look at that. Cool Tone Dreams. This is a newer one. I had an old disgusting one. Uh, but uh, this shade right here, girl. Last Pat McGrath palette in this drawer is going to be the subversive and underrated one in my opinion. I didn't like it as much at first when I got it, but now it's one of my favorites because of how unique and the different crazy smoky eyes that you can get with this one. Definitely a must have for me. Okay, let me put this back. And welcome to the Natasha Denona section of the drawer. And man, these are going to take us down memory lane, I feel like. We are going to start right here, which for the most part is the midi-sized palettes. So starting off up top. Again, these aren't in any particular order. <laughs> this is just where they're sitting. This is the bronze palette. I love this one, but I will admit a lot of the looks that you do with this look the same, but it really is the ultimate bronze palette. My beloved glam palette. This is probably, at the current moment, my favorite Natasha Denona palette. There's just nothing like it, in my opinion. I mean, there is, but as far as formulation and just the curation, one of my all-time favorite palettes. We have Love Palette, which has gotten a lot of attention recently because of the new retro palette that came out. This guy went on sale for $32 at Sephora for a little bit, which was an awesome deal. This isn't her best quality palette, but I will admit it's probably one of her most used palettes by me, which is crazy, but I just love the pinks and purples so much. We have the Sunrise Palette. This one was definitely not my favorite color story. If I remember correctly, I believe this is one of the first of the size 
prize though, so that kind of sold me. But I don't really reach for it that often because I don't love the color story, but that's what we have here. And then lastly, and of this size, we have the Zendo palette. And if you're wondering where the retro palette is, because it is this size, uh, it's just, it's somewhere because I used it for a video recently. But anyways, this was not my favorite palette. I did not really like the color story of this. I felt like the quality was lacking a little bit, but it's looking pretty right now. So those are all of the midis I have in this drawer. Down below at the very bottom here, we have Metropolis. Again, like that Pat McGrath hasn't come out with another palette this size and I really wish she would because the quality on this was amazing and the price is just awesome for the amount of shades that you get. Beautiful, beautiful palette. I hope she comes out with something like this in this format again for the holidays. That would be amazing. Now back here I have just the regular size 15 pan palettes from Natasha Denona. This one, for some reason, I forget about. The Trio Chrome palette. I mean, I think the mattes in here are really beautiful and you can get some very unique looks with this, but I definitely don't use it enough, but it's so pretty. We have the Circle Loco, which is one that I have so much fun with. It's definitely not a color story I would have bought had I not had a channel, but surprisingly, I've had so much fun with this and created so many cool looks. We have the Safari palette. This one is a fairly new one for me. I ordered a fresh one semi-recently within the last year. Uh, but yeah, I really like this one as well. I think it has some great mattes. We have the Tropic palette. This is the OG that nobody cared for the formula of the bottom row, but I still liked it. And I actually brought this with me on vacation a few times. So I really like this one, especially the mattes up top. They're awesome. We have the Lila palette. I just got a new one a couple of months ago because they were on a really great discount and mine was like really stained and dirty looking so I have a new one of this and for a while I didn't like this one but I'm back in the phase of where I love the color story of this. At the bottom, I don't know why it's still in its box. I have the Biba palette. I did a recent Natasha Denona haul and you guys saw that I got a new one of this and I did a gorgeous look. And this is really just staple in the Natasha Denona collection. Gold is not in this drawer right now. Where do I have my gold palette? I don't know, but it's not in this drawer, but you guys know I love my gold palette. And then I have my two OG 28 pans. This is my purple blue palette. I love these. I try and use these any chance that I get because they are so expensive, but the quality on these is, I swear to you guys, the best quality that Natasha Denona has ever come out with. This is the blue green one. Ugh, I love this one. Great if you're a neutral lover, especially now. The greens are so in style, absolutely gorgeous. I have these two guys. Remember when she just recently came out with these on sale? So I picked up two fresh ones. So this is from holiday season a few years ago, but she relaunched these for a little bit. And this is the Joya palette, which is really pretty. I like this one a lot. Then we also have the Aries palette. Again, really fun. I've used the joya palette a couple of times i still need to use this one and then we have the 10 pound palette that nobody talks about but i got it on a really great discount at natasha denona and it has the most gorgeous cool tones i need to dig into this one it's fairly new so i haven't yet i absolutely love the tones in this one and she hasn't come out with this format which i'm kind of glad since this one but yeah it's weird it's like cut in half we are not yet done because I have my collection down here sitting like this. Kind of can't see it because it's blocked, but they're sitting like this. Of my mini palettes. Just to quickly shoot through them, we have the mini glam palette. Great and neutral. I love these guys for the most part. This is the mini Lila. This one was not my favorite, but I actually used this kind of recently. The look it created was so pretty, but again, the quality is just not there with this one. Ooh, this is the mini gold palette. This one is everything. I need to use that one. I haven't used that in a while. The mini Zendo palette. I wasn't crazy about this one. I just remember not liking it. We have the mini star palette. This one is so beautiful. My mom has the big star palette. I don't own the big star palette, but I should pick that up one day just to complete my collection. 
We have the mini sunset. This is one of the original ones that was not very good. Next up, we have the mini retro. I mean, it's been in a lot of YouTube videos recently because of the retro palette that just came out, but she is so pretty. And then the, oh no, we have two more. So this is the mini love palette, really beautiful. I really, really liked this one. This was a great little launch from Natasha. And then the last one that I have, which is the newest mini, is the mini Xenon palette. And this one is really nice, but you can dupe it with a cheaper ColourPop palette. Not that this is a lot of money, but the ColourPop is just such a better value but it's a nice palette it's very niche colors like I don't see a ton of people loving this color story but those are all of my minis I'm gonna sneak these back here put my midi sized right here and we have completed the Natasha Denona section in this drawer so we're gonna scoot over here dun, 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 dun. welcome to my mostly busy art you'll see I have another brand in here towards the back but let me get this even because this is not very even is it <laughs> much better so the majority of this is going to be my Vizzy art palettes I love Vizzy art so much they have some of the best quality shadows in my opinion the only thing is they don't have the best packaging and you guys know I'm a, I'm a huge packaging person but as far as the quality of the shadows you can see I love their stuff in the back here though I'm gonna kind of go off track I have Four Charlotte Tilbury palettes. I keep the quads and all of that in another drawer, but these are kind of big, so I keep them here. This is the Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize right here. Really pretty. These are all like holiday launches, if I'm remembering correctly. The Stars in Your Eyes. This is from a few years ago. All of these kind of look the same, <laughs> but I still love them. I still buy them. This is the Pillow Talk Instant Eye Palette. This was my wedding palette, so this one is very special to me. And then this one, I wish she would come out with more palettes like this because this one was so good. This is called the Icon Palette. Really great colors that you get in here, and it really represents Charlotte Tilbury as a brand very, very well. So those are like the larger Charlotte palettes that I keep right here but let's dig back into the busy art so down here hiding we have these cute little petite four palettes that came out a few months ago they are the most adorable little things that I've ever seen so here are the Lilas ah, aren't they so cute and this is just a gorgeous cool tone color story they're so cute and pocket size I love them next we have chocolate really cute very warm toned this one was one of my favorites praline because it's a little bit more of the cooler toned neutral shades really love this one and then lastly we have framboise which is like more raspberry tones right here again super duper pretty love these sneaking this okay i'm just gonna start pulling these guys out over here so this one is my very first experience with Viziart. I randomly bought this at Sephora and absolutely fell in love with the formula. And they've kind of gotten rid of this style of shadow, but these truly are the best quality. What are these called? The Theory Palettes in Minx. Absolutely beautiful. This was my very first dip into Vizzy Art. And then here we have all of the cute little petite pros. You can see they're really tiny. These are the perfect travel palette you guys because you get so many colors in such a small palette so this is a Pricotine this has these great sunset kind of peachy tones next up we have the solstice palette this one is a little bit more neutral than the Pricotine this one is really really fun what are you called the Shoo Shoo palette, oh my gosh. How fun is this? I actually brought this with me on vacation to Tampa and I had a lot of fun with these pink shades. This one is really cute. This is Midsummer. It's a little bit more neutral if you're into like the soft ballerina kind of tones. And then the last Petit Pro we have, this one was my favorite for the longest. This one is called Soleil and you can get the prettiest sunset eye with this. And I don't know, I think it's like a unique array of colors that flow so well together. We have some edit palettes right here. These again 
fabulous for travel and you squeeze even more colors in with this. So we have the Warm Edit palette right here. Pretty self-explanatory on the name. Rosé Edit, I took this with me to Miami and absolutely love this. I forgot to put this in my monthly favorites, but I meant to because it was just the perfect little travel palette to take with me to throw on some shadow on the eyelid. Dark Edit's one of my favorites. It's just such a unique fall palette. Great quality, gorgeous looks that you can get with this. I love this one. This is the Spritz Edit. Really fun, warm shades here as well. Very neutral. And then my all-time favorite edit palette, which is the Paris Edit because you guys know I love these mauve cool tones. So this one has my name written all over it. And then we have the next size up. What are these called? Can't remember what this size is called. They made the shades a little bit bigger and this is the Paris Love Letter. This isn't my favorite palette that Viseart had come out with. The tones are really soft. I think the quality of a couple of the shades weren't up to par with Viseart, but it is a gorgeous palette nonetheless and I love the packaging. And then, let me squeeze this. Oh, I love this one. This is the Violet Itundu. I mean, yes. And they were so kind to me, you guys. I got to do a giveaway when this launched. They know I love purple, so <laughs> I love this one. Um, I have a couple of these palettes hidden in the back right here. This, they no longer sell. This was what the Violet Itundu was based off of. This is the Liaison palette. This one is still tried and true favorite purple palette. Just the tones, the curation, everything. Love it, but I'm really happy they started this new size because I'm not as big of a fan of this style of packaging. And then we have the Libertine. This was one of the first Vizzy Art reviews, I believe, that I did. So this one has a little bit of meaning to me too. In the back here, I can get this out without disrupting anything. I have my Grande Pro palettes. These are big, they are expensive, they are worth it in my opinion, just because I'm such a Viseart stan, but this is the Grande Pro 2. So this one is the all shimmer version. I need to use this. I have not pulled this out in the longest time, but it has such pretty shimmer tones in here, lots of different textures. I need to pull this out. It's been a long time since I've used this, but Viseart Grande Pro 2. Let me squeeze this back here. Next up, this is volume three. This was limited edition. I mean, you'll see why. It's um, a pure rainbow palette. I actually used this semi-recently. Uh, I mean, it's great if you need to grab in for specific colors. And I mean, these are so expensive, you guys. But I just... I had to have it. I did. And then last one. I have a new one in my makeup kit, so I retired this one. This is the OG Volume 1. She looks quite gross because she's gotten so much use. Probably one of my most used palettes in my collection, which looks sad, I know, because I haven't hit pan on anything, but I'm not one to use the same shadows every day, so if there's a dip, you can tell I really, really love this, but what a fabulous curation of so many colors, you guys just perfection. I think you can see these guys. These are Busy Arts claim to fame right here, these style of eyeshadow palettes. They're made for the pro so that you can see the colors that you are grabbing for. So let's go through them. And I have a few in my kit, so if you don't see them here, they're actually in my kit. So this is the Sultry Muse, absolutely beautiful. I don't know why this is not in my kit. This should be in my kit. This is like untouched. I need to put this in my kit, but this is one of the ones that I recommend the most if you're getting into the 12 pans. We have the Warm Mattes, which the names are quite self-explanatory. <laughs> warm Mattes. These are some of the best quality shadows you will use. I'm telling you, these mattes are incredible. This is the Cool Mattes 2. Next up, we have the Bright very very bright i haven't used this as much as i should but i mean you can see why i haven't used it this palette was curated so clever to get any color on the rainbow that you need in just a 12 pound palette this is one that was made for me by muse beauty pro uh celeste over there she was kind enough to curate some colors for me so i have this one right here and i can always take shadows out and mix them around however i would like this is bridal satin really pretty pinky coolish neutral tones right here great for lid colors 
Next up we have Koi. This is one of the most underrated Viseart palettes in my opinion. These shadows are so extremely versatile, you guys. One of my absolute favorites. The Downtown Eyeshadow Palette, which was a collaboration with Alcone. I actually had all of these colors in my collection when I bought this, but I just love the way that this palette was curated. I think it's so beautiful. I want to leave this out because I want to use this. I've only used this like twice. That's a reminder to pull it out. This is the Neutral Mattes Milgue, kind of like a Warm Mattes 3 palette if you ask me. Really pretty great berry tones in here so you can pull some interesting looks from this one. And then we have the classic Neutral Matte which got a lot of attention for Busy Arts. I mean it just has every neutral shadow that you would need. It's a great base for anything. There we have it you guys. Those are all of the palettes that I am currently storing in my luxury eyeshadow palette drawer. This is like, these are my babies. I, I love them. <laughs> All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you to those of you who have taken the time to subscribe and like all my videos like this one it was fun to sh play in my little treasures and now I just want to sit down and swatch all over my body in fact I think I'm gonna do that so that's all I have for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one bye guys have a good one